When a nurse and a pet winner, you want to sort of powder. Never yet, and will never ever. Ken Jadis of you saying special request. Still alone, chill alone. Girls, girls, every day. From London, Canada, and the USA. Girls, girls, every day. Count Shabba, King of Sudan, DJ, we have a chill a load of girl, down a walk, we come up, we need a custom officer for help, clear them off. Chill a load of girl, down a walk, we come up, we need a custom officer for help, clear them off. Girl, I'm in my name, my soul and heart, 40 girl and 50 sweetheart. Can't you have a one of your heart? Chill a load of girl, they must come off, you see? Boom. Hey, you it's Julie Kendra here. We're so live, crossover. TV Live with Kendra, we are live all over the world, www.bronxnet.org. Tell a friend to tell another friend. And we're going to go to a very special clip, and this is our covering 50 years of hip-hop at Bronxnet, Crossover TV, yours truly, Kendra. And then we're going to bring the Latino spin on this thing with the L-Line, so lock your dolls right here, Crossover TV. Check out our slideshow. About the games people play. Life is short, you won't be left behind. So you use games to ease your mind. Try to make changes, try to make it right. Nobody listens, so you gotta fight. Speak your mind, and then you'll say you're just getting over with the games people play. I'm with Sal from the Fever. You know this Fever guy right here. Talk to me. That's right, baby. And you looking hot, so you better catch it. Just having the 50th anniversary of hip hop, we are so blessed to be here together as a family, hip hop family. Whoever thought it would go this far, and it's bigger and better than ever. The biggest music in the world, Boogie Down Bronx, baby, forever. That's how strong, Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. 
Hey, we're right back. I hope we just came back and something very special is about to go down on the takeover. It's going down right here on your truly crossover TV with Kendra and Elena. So y'all are in for a treat. The L line. Because we have not yet Tuffy. aired Tuffy. one of our next episodes that focuses on rap music. And so for me, the, one of the first people I want to introduce is someone that I listened to during my college days, and many of you will know him, the one and only Drez, as Black Sheep. If you remember, you could get with this, and you, or could, you get could get with that, that. right? You as can get with this, or you can get with that. As many lines that we would say, right? Who's and the so Black gonna, Sheep? Right? I'm sorry. We're going to keep sorry. going? I'm All right. Uh, so we're going to bring in Dre. He said this could go and left. at the same time, <laughs> so we have something from the old, and we got to bring something in the new, too. So we got Lazarus, the top down, coming in here, telling us all about his new music and how he's going to be getting up Look live on our yes. show uh, in a moment, in a couple of moments. So come on in and start the show. Let's roll. All right. You could get with this, or you could get with that. You could get with this, <laughs> or you could get with it. <laughs> Is it takeover? Yes, it is. <laughs> Crossover. Well, we're going to take it back, right? We're going to take it right back from y'all right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All yours. All, all yours. Thank you. <laughs> what are y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> said, I'm seeing. I was like, you, you like, I'm I, out of this. I don't got nothing to do with this. <laughs> all right. I'm, I'm going to let. Um, it's good to be here, ladies. It's hey, good Dres. to see you. And my brother. Yo, oh, come on. You know. You know. Familia. Me and this guy go, go willy way back. I want to welcome you to Crossover TV Live with Kendra. And uh, this is the takeover right now. I'm being taken over by CUNY TV, the L line. And um, it's been hot in here. <laughs> so now, while we were on break, we were talking about how it wasn't always like shouted out or known who was Latino and who wasn't this is in true. hip hop. You right. know, let's kind of get into that a little bit. Why do you think that was the case? Um, I, I honestly feel like it because it didn't matter then. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 there's a lot of things that matter today that just didn't matter then. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, right now, everybody wants credit because night, right now, everything's been monetized to a degree. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so that credit means something now. Most you know what I'm saying? And, but, but when we was beginning, when it was at the, its begins, we were just glad to hear anybody that re represented it in public. Right. You know what I'm saying? It didn't matter where it could have been radio, could have been on a, a, at a party, it could have been in a park jam. It didn't matter. We were just so glad that people were hearing it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so the thought of it being monetized or the thought of getting rich from doing it, that was inconceivable. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so the origin of who did what, it didn't even matter because we were a collective. You know what I'm saying? Now with the, the generations that started going, you know, going forward and, you know, people started, you know, monetizing essentially what our art is, you know what I'm saying, in various degrees, you know what I'm saying, now it matters who's the first photographer, who's the first, you know, designer, who's the first, you know, who the first one put the lights out and, you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Right. But as far as hip hop goes, I think you guys hit it right on the head. It's, it's, it's the word hip hop itself, if you f pull it inside out, it's people. You know what I'm saying? It's always been about like-minded people. people. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's the voice of generations. You know what I'm saying? It has the opportunity to correct things that need correction. You know what I'm saying? If we allow it. You know what I'm saying? And one of the things that I see happening right now is that we've put a price on those things. Mm. Right. You know what I'm saying? And we have to step back a little bit because right. those things are more important than the price. Because we're in a we're in a place. The next fifty years are very important. We're in a place where you know, what I'm saying your integrity. All you have to do is say the number. They got it. You know what I'm saying? So you got to stand on yours. You know what I'm right. saying? Because whatever that number is, okay, who who do I make that out to? Right. You know what I'm saying? And they'll give you that. Right. And now where you? You know what I'm saying? So it's important as as a, as a collective, hip hop, collective. continue mm -hmm. to speak for the people. Like things like. Um, all of the radio stations, see, the radio stations were, were a very important element. Things like video music box, That's they right. raised us, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, as far as the East Coast goes. But the radio station as well is very important because it wasn't a list that was played by every payola. station. Every, 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 the payola. Not, well, we, I ain't even gonna say that. 
<laughs> but but what we all got, we all got to say that it's syndicated. Yeah. Yeah. It's right. syndicated. And right. so the syndication, what it does is effectively takes the power out of right. DJ's hands. Right. But it was the DJ that were the gatekeepers. It was the DJ that introduced us to the new notions, the things, they balance out the silly things with the smart things, mm -hmm. the crazy things with the, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. brave yes. things. You know what I'm saying? Like we, for every NWA, there was a public enemy. For every EPMD, there was a slick Rick. You know what I'm saying? Like, like for every, it was a balance. That balance is now gone due to syndication. Mm -hmm. They've taken the power out of DJ's hands to balance it. A DJ is now headless. It doesn't matter because they're all playing the same list. It doesn't exactly. matter who the day, exactly. DJ is at this point. Right. We have to take that back. Exactly. Because these That's are the so gatekeepers. Right. It's, very, it's very important that, like I said, only thing they did was put a price on integrity and cut a check for it. They, they can take this from us if we let them. You know what I'm saying? We got to step back and be like, no, there's no price on our community. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's important that we take a study the first 50 years and pull was good. The monetization isn't bad. It put us in a powerful position. This is amazing. But we have to do the right thing with that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if you had to give a pep talk to your younger self, mm -hmm. what would you tell him that he would need to know about this business? That he would need to know about this business? That, um... That essentially, I would say that uh, that ownership is a priority. You know what I'm saying? From publishing to masters, and sometimes you're not going to be in a, a position where you can just come in and own something. So in cases like that, those are short-term deals. You know what I'm saying? And more than anything, to not be lazy on no day, because you know what I'm saying? Like there are things that we learned in hip hop. You know, like New York thought New York was, and it was, for a moment, the end all. But there were people like Master P that showed us what happens if you hustle out of the trunk. There were West Coast that cast that showed you, you know what I'm saying, what happens if you take, the, take it, what you're saying, and speak directly, as brashly as you can to what the problem is, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, like, like there were nuances that, that affected the game. You know what I'm saying? And one of the things that New York had to do was kind of humble itself and take a step back and learn from different places. You know what I'm saying? And you'll see the effect to the degree that even today, like, you know, like there's, there's things in New York that have never been here as a result of hip hop. Real talk. You know what I'm saying? Word up as a result of hip hop. So, you know, like there's an identity that we got to find within ourselves. And I know I'm talking a lot, so I'm going to no, slow it down. I just wanted to say this. So I was with Curtis Blow just recently uh, when they did the Fever show over at Lehman. And the amazing drop that he gave me was about like the royalties and about what's happening, you know, and how we can change this. And that drop was the most unique drop I've ever, you know, I've had Curtis, you know, many times and talked to him. But that was really special. And I play that. When I intro my show a lot, I give that because that's information right. that we want to give. Right. And I think it's very important. So what you're telling folks, we just got to keep giving it to them. And Lazarus, as Lazarus comes in, you know, we just had Lazarus on the show just recently. Give him a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He has his business in order. So um, tell the folks, because you, how did you get involved in the project? Oh, well. First, hi to everybody. Um, mm -hmm. Shout out to the, you know the L line and the family. Um, shout out to Atlanta, of course. Um, I was performing at um, a show and actually Atlanta, you know, reached out to me. So I'm very grateful for her reaching out and giving me the opportunity as one of the new Latino artists from hip hop coming up now. That's okay. so. Oh, oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, go. Oh, uh, you wanted me to speak about? No, I just wanted to talk about like you know we talked about this before. Yeah, you know I have I do mentoring, I do this. So we talked about that the last time that you were up here, and I just wanted to give you a round of applause and say Thank keep. You. Keep up the good work that you're doing in the community. It's Thank very you. important. And in the rap game. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. I'd like to ask you what you think about what Dress said about speaking to his younger self, because you are in that, <laughs> in that area now. Right. Well, Dress kind of put it, you know, in a prison box, to tell you the honest truth. Um, I'm actually, if I was to look at myself, I am the Dress that is right now, but in the younger version. Why? The reason why was because I learned syndication that already came through. I learned that basically a lot of people don't realize that there's 15 different ways to be able to make money off of your music and sources. And what happens is we go through a lot of different third party action, all right? Like when you go through, uh, I'll give you an example, TuneCore, when you go through DistroKid, you're not realizing that your music is an intellectual property. And with that intellectual property, you lose that property once it's not properly registered the right way. So a lot of people usually go and say, okay, well, I'm gonna upload the song 
like if I didn't know what I was doing, I would have just uploaded the song and gave it to Atlanta and not realize that then they that I just basically hit my own self in the foot. Right. And the reason why I hit my own self in the foot is because the gatekeepers don't want you to know the scenario of how streaming works right now. All right. And when you first start, you know, and I'll give them a gem because soon I'll be giving, you know, hip hop remedial classes to people and showing them what it's like to give it back. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why is because the first step a person does is go and they try to put their music on a distribution company, right? And that's not the right thing to do. The first thing you're actually supposed to copyright your music first. Exactly. All right, so that way you know. And then away from that, if you've never heard of it, the Harry and Fox agency and become a licensor. And then afterwards, once you become a licensor, you start to pitch and generate your music quickly as possible to these other companies. And we don't realize that because as human beings, we want a quick and fast way. So what yeah. the distribution companies did was they said, we're going to blind you with wolves in sheep's clothing, give you a simple, easy way for you to sign up online and be able to put your music out, long story short. And that's not the right way. Thanks. In a nutshell, don't be lazy. You there know you what I'm saying? <laughs> they, they gave you some low-hanging fruit. Correct. You know what I'm saying? That everyone can reach and everyone reaches it. Thank you. you know what I'm saying? And uh, I just want to say this to you, um, Dress, you know, a long time in the industry. And, you know, you said, you know, you spent some time in a place and you said, you know, I'm never going to glorify crime. I'm never going to, like, rap just about crime. Right. And I just want to um, commend you for that. And it's very important in the industry that we, we keep, I love that old school flavor. We're not disrespecting anybody. We're not. So I just love it. And thank you so much. I mean, you know, I appreciate that. I mean, and that's to say that, you know, like I walk the same streets everybody walks, you know what I'm saying? And I think some, there's a way to say things without saying things. You know what I'm saying? And, <clears throat> and, and in my opinion, like, you know, that's one of the dope things about hip hop that existed, that we had to creatively say something to bring it to middle America, to bring it into your house, you know what I'm saying, to be able to get into even our parents' homes. You know what I'm saying? Like, as savvy as our parents were, they didn't want to hear what it is today. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It, it, as explicit as it is. We had to really have, find a way to, to finesse that, you know, like, yeah, we walk the same blocks that whoever else walks, but, you know, or that, you know, or that we stand for something or that, you know what I'm saying, that these things aren't right in our community, but to stand on a soapbox made it almost like we don't want to hear that. Right. So we had to creatively find ways to, and soulfully find ways to present new music. Speaking of which, I'm sure we both have new music. I would like to tell y'all about a project I yes. have coming out. November 21st, um, I have a film being released called The Choice um, on Paramount Plus. Nice. And yeah, like I'm really, really excited about it. Um, it's a documentary of sort, and it, it kind of speaks to my work at this point. You know what I'm saying? It. And I the ageism it. that might exist a little bit, and how mm -hmm. I bump into it, the opportunity to create a music project completely produced by Jay Dilla, um, Dope. with permission from his mom. You'll, you'll see it in the film, how I kind of bump into it. And um, okay. you'll actually, even in conjunction with the film, be able to um, purchase some of this music after the film. And, um, and like I said, it's produced by Jay Dilla, so it's like this amazing thing that's just taking place. And, um, and, and as well, that take it even a step, a notch up towards the end of the film, a very special brother walks into it and there's a possibility that there might be a black sheep album next year. Woo! On Drop the takeover bomb. with the yeah. airline yeah. and crossover, That's right. right here, Bronx Net. Right. Uh, I want to do this. Uh, I want to have you come back, and I want to like you to bring that project here so that we can bring it out to the audience and, love and let all over the world. We're live www.bronxnet.org, yeah. and we are weekly, and we do this. This is what we do. So I want to let people know what you're doing. Dress, dress of the black sheep right here. Crossover to Lazarus. What's coming up? What's coming up? Oh, yes. for me, um, I have my new album coming out. It's called The Life of a Dawn, Volume One, exclusively produced by Amadeus. Cover from uh, COD Records, and of course, I had to get the legendary Law Finesse on there and keep it Bronx for them. Woo! You know, very, Woo! Real hip -hop. All right, I'm All very right. proud of you guys. So um, I want to welcome you back. When everything just hits, just come see me, okay? Definitely. You got you got the digits. You know what's so. up. All, All right. right. So I want to do this. Um, Dress, can I get a, you could get with this. Can I get something, what, Black Sheep? Uh, what, what do you want, what, what would you like? Tell, tell me, tell me what would you like? Uh, you could get with this, or you could get with that. <laughs> you could get with this. I mean, is that all? Um, I'm just asking, like, you can, you, get, the you can get with this, so you can get with that. Crossover TV. For a while, it was magnanimous, lifestyle, the glamorous, and abundance of love, living life in front of cameras, the whole world, the fan of us, champagne, cannabis, living the diamond life that any man can adjust. 
A lavish recipe, ecstasy and complexity. You're in another galaxy, but never quite a refugee. Cause the mess, they can't refrain every day. They call my name. Set a flame with a claim, but squeeze sounds never sustain. Still I'm getting the gist of seeing money that's crisper. And I ain't gotta holler back, I only gotta whisper. My every thought manifests, testament of success. Got niggas, killing my anger, I mean, that's their breast. Be swinging it up to pause, superior repertoire. Top notch, first class, first string. Five stars since a lamb. I bump my head just like a battering ram. But the rich glitz and glam doesn't define who I am. I better they quit out, they quit out, they quit out, they Black quit sheep. out. They Black sheep. Black sheep in the building. I want to give they a big shout out, out to Dress. Uh, Lars, give me a little, yeah. me out, give me a little something, yeah. something, little sample, sample. Oh, she wanted me to hit him with bars so I could make them listen until I put the game in this fetal position. But everything was missing until I brought it back. I'm from the era of hip hop and we're giving you rap. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Come on, the L line, the takeover. Thank you, Lazarus. Thank you, Dress from the Black Sheep for coming out. And we'll be right back, everybody. We got another clip. I'm Elena Romero. And I'm Tuffy Questel, and welcome to the Hip Hop Subway, The, the L -Line. Line. This six part series celebrates the 50th anniversary of hip hop, presented by Latinas and CUNY TV. Yes, we've been examining the global phenomenon that is hip hop from every angle and specifically through the Latino lens. Today, we're getting off at the second stop on the L Line Media. Now, as a co-host on Video Music Box, I know a thing or two regarding the role the media played when it comes to the globalization of hip hop, since many artists from the golden age of hip hop made their debuts on our show. If you're from Forest Projects, you know who Full Eclipse is, right? Of course you do, of course they do. <laughs> Throughout the years, everyone has learned about hip hop through media, whether it was on the radio, in magazines, or on TV or film, and we're about to hear about the role all of those mediums played in growing this genre over the past 50 years. I'll be talking with my brother, Ulysses Torero, in a few about the doc he directed called Hip Hop for Siempre, a film that focused on the global effect that gave Latinos hope and opportunity in every facet of hip hop and music. But first, I'm sitting down with Tuffy again, along with the founder and original host of Video Music Box, the one and only Ralph McDaniels. Everybody's uncle. Thanks for coming back, Ralph. So what do you think about my new co-host? How do he fare off? Uh, he's he's excellent. He's doing an excellent job. I'm, I'm I'm very proud of him. I mean, you know, he's been around the sets a couple of times, so he should know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I feel <Yeah>. co-signed. <laughs> so Ralph, tell us what role TV has played in telling the history and the story of hip hop. A big role, because prior to uh, TV, music videos, and documentaries. The only way we knew about some of these artists and the culture was through magazines or hearing it on the radio. So we had to use our imagination to go past that still to see what was actually happening or our imagination to listen to that radio and paint a picture of what that is in our, in our mind. When the TV started getting involved and you started seeing, you know, more Latinos and on TV shows and programs on the Johnny Carson show in the 70s, and late night shows were really probably an introduction for many big stars back then. Um, Soul Train, even Dick Clark's American Bandstand was the beginning of seeing, you know, like who's Tony Orlando and Dawn? It's a big record. Oh, it's a Spanish dude? Where are you from? Mexico? Where is it? You know, you thought about that for a second, you know? But, um, but that was the beginning of seeing these artists and, you know, getting to hear them talk, it's, you know, it's one thing to hear you sing. When you see somebody talking in their own language, that's a different, different thing. Tuffy, what are some of your fondest memories of hip hop on TV? Wow, um, I'm still thinking about Tony Orlando. <laughs> I love that whole aspect because these are the people who made it possible for all of us. Yeah. Movies like Juice, mm. um, movies that, you know, had, you know, Beat Street and Wild Style, which were great. No question. But the whole idea of watching films and watching people who look like me made the difference in everything I, I wanted to do. As an actor, as a casting director, as, a, as an entertainer, any opportunity to see me on screen was a blessing. You know, Yafut Koto was one of the first real 
dark-skinned actors you saw on television. And it doesn't get much darker than him. <laughs> but then we have a Flavor Flav in hip-hop who's that same complexion, and you're blessed by it. Shabba Rinks in, in reggae music. So you love that they've given us the opportunity, and it's sad to say they have given us the opportunity, but we've taken the opportunity. And there are a lot more Latinos in the game, not just from West Side Story, not just Rita Moreno, and although they also did not give a lot of Latinos all those roles, um, but we, we started taking them, and now we're creating that content. So, Ralph, you did a hip-hop show before it became popular on mainstream television. Yes. Many people know MTV, but MTV Raps debuted in 1988, five years after you guys premiered. So how did you feel that your show advanced the careers of not only hip-hop artists, but Latino hip-hop artists in particular? We were all looking for something to focus on on TV that looked like us. So if it was me talking, if it was Tuffy, mm -hmm. if it was me interviewing you at the, the uh, magic show in Vegas, whatever it was, we were looking for people that looked like us. And so if it was J-Lo sitting home watching Lisa Lisa, yes. it, she got something from that. Lisa Lisa, we, we, we skip over her. She's a major star, you know? Lisa Lisa before J-Lo. That was our J-Lo yeah. of our generation. Without a doubt. Yeah. And it, it wasn't just for kids that were from the Latino community, it was for everybody. If you went to hip hop, if you went to New York culture, everybody was watching, you know? If you came from Pakistan, if you came from um, Nigeria, Ghana, wherever you came from, this is what Video Music Box did. It made you know how to dress, know how to talk, know how to act, because when you came from these different places, you wanted to fit in. You didn't want to seem like you were from somewhere else. You didn't want people to know that. You know, you were from uh, a Dominican Republic. You were from, um, you know, wherever, Nigeria. You wanted people to feel like, oh, he's just like us. They would study Video Music Box and go, okay, if I talk like that, I can fit in. Say that. And people won't realize that I'm not, you know, from here. I wasn't born here. And that made the transition for many um, immigrants smoother. Because kids are tough. They, they'll make fun of you. They'll make fun of your accent. They'll make fun of your clothes, your shoes. And it was like, I just got to act like this and I can get away with That's it. That's it. For that little 10 minutes of conversation at lunchtime and I'm good, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know? Mm-hmm. That, that was water cooler conversation. Yeah. They listened to Video Music Box in order to have conversation for the next day. What made you select Tuffy and Tuffy? What made you work with Ralph? Tuffy's sister was the first producer of Video Music Box. She came on board and, you know, she was, oh, my brother's having some a party or we were doing a video. I can't remember. And he came to the set and I listened to him and I realized he had personality. You know, I could see that immediately. I was like, I don't know what he does, but he has personality. And I'm good at that. You know, like, I, I, I swear, Cardi B, before she made, I didn't even know she could rap. But as soon as I saw her, I was like, she's going to be somebody. I don't know what, what it is she's going to be, but she's going to be somebody. And I saw that same thing in Tuffy and others, you know, because it's, the TV is not about us. It's about what we're funneling back out that makes us important. On that note, thanks for joining us, Ralph. We'll be right back with more on the Hip Hop Subway. Magazines and radio have helped put hip hop on the map. And today we are fortunate enough to have Tony Martinez, one of the founders of Stress Magazine, a Latino founded hip hop publication, along with award-winning filmmaker, author, and journalist, Raquel Cepeda. Welcome to you both. Thank, Thank you. you. So I like to start off the conversation with a page right out of Brown Sugar. When did you first fall in love with hip hop? I want to say it was about eight, nine years old, um, and just getting some friends, getting holds of mixtapes that were battles of different crews, Cold Crush, the Force MCs, the Fantastic Freaks battling at different places, Harlem World, and then kind of seeing the B-Boys break dancing, and then you start seeing the artwork and you're just fascinated with it. And like, there's a whole new world that you got exposed to as being let out of the house. 
you know, and you're hanging out with your friends and you just begin to naturally embrace it, you know, hearing Spoonie D and Curtis Blow, you know, like, and you're just like, I just love this. I love the creativity and I love the rawness of it and the funness of it, you know? So I was like, I, I, like, I, I gotta learn more and I wanna be part of this. Well, um, I guess I was about the same age because I moved back. I, I was born in Harlem, but I was raised in, in DR in Santo Domingo from the time I was about, you know, six months to about almost eight. So when I came back to New York, just to the patina of New York City was kind of like fly to me when we first, you know, you first come in and you walk, you going around and whatever. And then, you you know, you get into my neighborhood where I grew up in Inwood. And I'm like seeing for me, my first foray, if you want to look at hip hop in a holistic way, would be graffiti art started to go to school and I see the trains and I just fell so in love with it. And then seeing, you know, like the style and, you know, it's such an organic relationship. Um, it's not like, you know, I moved here and then I fell in love with this. Hip hop was a lingua, kind of like a lingua franca, like what, you know, um, salsa was to our, to our parents' generation. You know, like the whole Fania sound, it gave people that had pan latinidad, right? A way to, feel a little less unsettled in a new land, right? So hip hop was kind of like, the, 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 that generation begat that. Um, the generation of the street families begat that, begat us. It was a culture emerging. See. Si. And it was cool. Like the style, you know, very distinct. Not everybody was into hip hop. And it was very distinct. Like you stood out if you had on a sweatshirt that had those old English letters on it. If you had the sneakers with the fat laces, you know, like the certain jeans, the certain look. And that style kind of evolved and you stood out. And I remember immediately, you know, like me and my friends were like, we're going to start a crew. And everybody had a crew, and everybody did everything in the crew. You DJ'd, you b-boyed, you tried to write graph as much of a toy as you were, and you created a, <laughs> a name for yourself, and that's what you were tagging. You embraced all elements of the culture, and you wanted to learn and be doing all of it. Well, it was the soundboard of our youth, our teens, our young adults, which then leads me to my next question about the medium of media and the role that it played, such a huge role at that. Well, definitely in my neighborhood, I saw a lot of media happening and I got an inkling very young, like, wow, can you actually use this cool stuff, this cool culture to tell stories? And, you know, first I was really taken aback by uh, Star Wars, which is the first hip hop documentary, um, which Beat Street later borrowed a lot from. Um, and it was just something really freaking cool. And then even when it got like even a little bigger and you had, I remember I had a babysitter and we couldn't get, and I had to go to the bathroom really badly, and I had to wait, and I couldn't go across the street. And I learned that day about production and how they had to lock the, everything down because Lorenzo Lamas was making this incredibly corny movie <laughs> that I don't even, Body Rock, and they was coming out of the one train, and he was keep on, kept on walking and walking, using kids in our neighborhood from as extras. And you're seeing, like, wow, like, there's a way to be seen. So now hip-hop has, in mainstream media, been kind of always looked at from the male perspective or male point of view. What role would you say women have played, especially Latinas? I didn't know many uh, 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 Latinas that were writing about hip hop in the very, very beginning. And I edited a, a book, an anthology about what I consider the best hip hop writing of the last 25 years, starting 2004 and going back. And I really didn't find uh, many Latina names. I tried to fill a space that I didn't see being filled. And not only did we have Latinas as writers, but we had a few editor-in-chiefs, you included. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, by the time I was editor-in-chief of, of uh, Russell Simmons' One World, by then already writing for many different publications, I had allies and a lot of the allies also happened to be men. And I started with uh, a magazine, uh, like kind of a semi-glossy call, I don't know if you remember this, New Word from Brooklyn. It's very small, it's where Saul Williams first published his poetry. A lot of the journalists that became names started there. And I started writing for free because I just wanted to write. I wanted to write, I wanted a place to write. And then when I became the editor in chief, I really did try my hardest to put a lot of women on and put young journalists on and give them a space to really hone their craft. 
Tony, so we had Raquel at One World. We also had Mimi Valdez at one point at, at Vibe, and then we had and Kim Osorio at The Source. Right. Tell us a little bit about why a few Latinos and friends got together to start Stress Magazine. Yeah, I like to consider myself like, like a hip-hop purist, if you will, where, again, it's about the culture, and there's a another element that sometimes gets overlooked, which is the activism part. There was no voice, so we had to create the voice. That's what Stress Magazine was. And it was just a bunch of kids, like recent college grads, who were like, these other magazines are watered down, and they don't really discuss um, social political issues, and they don't address our, you know, the things that are affecting our communities. So we're going to do that, but in a cool hip-hop way, and we have our ears to the streets. It was the first magazine that put Fat Joe, Eminem, The Roots, you know, on the cover. You had all these people, you know, some Latin, some not, but it, we knew who was going to be hot before they were hot. And because we were indie, we had the liberty to just kind of do it as at will. It was very true and pure in our intentions. Well, I'm sorry, Tony and Raquel. We've run out of time. This right. has been an amazing <laughs> conversation. Thank you, both of you, for joining us and sharing your knowledge and expertise. And now here's Tuffy with Ulysses Torero. Gracias, Elena. As we already know, hip hop may have had its first stop in the Bronx, but it's now running in every train, in every train line, in every part of the world, and is an ever-growing culture. Joining us now is my brother, Ulysses Terrero, who is one of the driving forces behind the new documentary, Hip Hop Por Siempre, which celebrates Latinos overall who are doing huge things in hip hop and music. Why Hip Hop Por Siempre, and why now? Well, Hip Hop Por Siempre was an Amazon idea, an Amazon concept. They did something uh, which Rodrigo Films brought to them, which was La Cuna de Dembo, which did extremely well, especially, you know, having the biggest Latino in it, Bad Bunny. Hello. You know, it shook the radar. So, right. so, so they wanted to continue in that Latin space. So then, uh, you know, the, the, the company that came up with Hip Hop Por Siempre, which, you know, we confirmed or whatever. But uh, like I said, it was... You know, I'm glad you brought it up because a lot of like the the legends and the culture had a problem with it, right? So globally, it was a, a, a huge success. I travel a lot, so I go to this country, that country, this state, that state, and everyone's like, oh my God. You know, this started a conversation that right. Latinos have always been overlooked, you know, till this day as well. You know, so it's like they did the 50th anniversary uh, of hip hop and no networks, no show, no conversations, nobody mentioned one Latino. Wow. You know, and that's the only, I haven't directed in maybe like two, three years. Because, mm -hmm. you know, just, you know, I'm, I'm an artist and I have issues with people that control the creative that don't know anything about the creative. They hire you to do something and then they're like, hey, don't you think this should be more street? And it's like, what do you mean more street? You know, maybe a hooker and a crackhead and it's like, what are you talking about? That's the 80s. You're right. The fact that this was an opportunity to start a conversation about how we, we, we've just o always overlooked. The Amazon's, you know, one of the biggest <laughs> companies on the planet Earth, and, and they promoted the hell out of this everywhere, globally. And I wanted to make a statement to everyone that we were here. Say that. And, and that was my goal, was to try to reach out to everyone that was there in the beginning and that's here now at the highest level ever. And that was kind of the goal of this project. You know, I was there. You know, I was there. I grew up in the South Bronx, 161 and Walton Avenue. Mm -hmm. I went to the parties for a dollar, two dollars when they were doing the hip hop music. I was a b-boy, you know, CBS crew can't be stopped. You know, I did rap, Big Justin Fly. You know I mean? I, I was part of the culture. You're still a b-boy. You know, I still am. You just yeah, elevated I, I, was, again. I was about to go right now, but, 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 but the thing is, is like, so, so the, the main goal was to let to start a conversation. Hello, everyone. We were there. Right. The first rap group ever. The second rap group ever. Like we were there, you know. And, and, and the biggest problem is that some of the some of the legends, you know, that maybe didn't catch the bag because back then we did it for love. Right. You know. So it wasn't until like Run DMC and certain people that made hip hop platinum and you know and changed the level of what this music was and then the millions came after that but but uh so so 
So a lot of people wanted the bag on this. Right. You know, and it's a documentary. There's no bag. It's a project that Amazon was doing, and 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 we we were we were work for hire, mm -hmm. and we took the job to make sure it was done as best as it could be done. And y'all did that. You know, that you that did. was the attempt, right? Hip hop literally saved my life. My question would be then, would it make sense that we should see hip hop pa siempre? Episode one, episode nine, episode three hundred. I mean, you have like, footage out obviously for days. Like, like I said, you know, there's a conversation maybe, maybe potentially doing, you know, each part. You know, break dancing, graffiti, graffiti uh, DJ, and hip hop, and, and spending more time on that. You know, Copy that. you know, it, you know, this started a conversation. You know, that's what it was. So the people that 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 were frustrated that they weren't in it or they didn't get the money or whatever the case is, like this was an opportunity to start a conversation and, and, and show you, show them, show the legends to this new generation that doesn't even know how it started, where it started, who was there, who right. did it. So it was, it was, we were trying to do educational pieces. It was, it was, it was, originally it was 25 minutes. You know, if you're lucky, you got a minute. What did you leave on the edit floor that you wish you hadn't? I mean, hours and hours and hours of footage. I like say, be real. Oh my God! You, I'm you, sure you, you could just you could, you could just do the movie of him talking. Wow! I mean, I mean, it's like you know, like I said, I I was blessed to have directed a video for him many years ago with Tony Touch and Nina Sky. Nice. That's the first time I met him, and well, actually, that's not the first time I met him. That's the first time I worked with him. So it was like you know, I'm a fan. So you know, so so to have have you know went to his studio in L.A. and we sat down with him, and he was just so mature, so so brilliant, so smart, and, and he. He really spoke about the business side of things, and and, and how to capitalize on off your music, your platform, your followers, your popularity. Like he really talked. He, it was an educational piece. So that's a whole nother documentary that needs to be done. Would, would, would be real, but he was, you know, like I said, everyone, you know, a uh, residente. Oh my God. Woo. I mean, I can. I, I'd like to Woo. see some of that footage. Um. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 I mean, it's like they're legends. Right. So we asked like 20 questions. Of course. So, you know, so, you know, and that was the hardest thing was how do you make a 25 minute piece with 30 hours of footage that, that you know, Noriega, oh my God. I can only imagine, I mean, Noriega, oh that's my, stories for Oh days. my Noriega. God, Noriega. What's next? Ah, I can't talk about it. Okay. You know, it, it, it's, it's a bad, it's a bad, um, it's bad because I believe in um, manifestation. I believe in positive energy. I believe in all that stuff, right? But for me, for some weird reason, whenever I share what I'm going to do, I got you. You don't even I... like like say the the Fat Joe series, right? Mm -hmm. We were ready to go, right? We we're ready to go. Nobody knew about it. They put it on deadline, and everybody started talking about it. Good energy, bad energy. And, and and we haven't started shooting yet. Actually, one of the projects, you know, I want you in it. I'm there. I, w I would love for you to be part of one of them, actually. I, I, listen, I, I, if we had another Malta, I'd toast to you right now. <laughs> um, here comes Elena, which means our, our time is running thank beyond. Thank you so much for that. And thank you. We need these kind of films. This is just the beginning. Oh, Things wow. Started okay. oh, this, oh, this is like when you get the award and you talk too much and... <laughs> She's, She's the, the band. Music. She's the music. Oh, man. I, I didn't even say anything yet. Woof. That's all the time we have for today, but don't hop that turnstile on the way home, bro. <laughs> Make sure you come back and ride with us to the next stop on the Hip Hop Subway when we talk photographers, fashion, and more on the L Line. I'm Tuffy Questel. And I'm Elena Romero. See you at the next stop. Selma Hayek wore a Gucci Dapper Dan outfit, which was really a Dapper Dan outfit. She was representing him, her being Mexican, I liked the way she was bridging the gap. You didn't have the music in isolation, it was always about visuals. So what people wore was always a part of the culture. It was a, one aspect of how they expressed themselves. We, we contributed to the music, we contributed to the dance, we contributed to the art, and, um, and I think that needs to be talked about. You know, and somehow through the commercialization of hip hop, all of that gets left out.
We're still not done yet. It's all about the takeover. The airline is in the building, but you know I'm BX, baby. All day. But Kendra. What's going on, Tuffy? It's the takeover, Kendra. It's all What's about up, the baby? takeover from Kendra to Tuffy and Elena. And we got Tina Beth. And this is what we do woo, on woo. the crossover. It's the takeover <laughs> shutdown. And coming up, we're going to talk about artistry to a different level. We're talking about the most of I mean, graffiti artists. We're talking about all that kind of creative stuff. And I'm telling you, I saw a post on his brother's page where he was doing, uh, uh, I don't know what to call it, cement craziness, face covered. I was, I was choking just looking at the post. I'm claustrophobic just thinking about that. That's like being in a coffin. So I want you to meet my man Coast TCS, the crazy, he's so dope, and Leah Sands coming in. Come on, y'all. Give it up, clap it up, clap it up, clap it up. Coach is real graffiti, everybody. You know, these are, these are folks that um, really give back in the community. So I just want to say that. I have to do that. I want to <laughs> applaud you. I want to thank you, Coach, thank for you. bringing this to BronxNet, really. You have done something amazing bringing this to BronxNet. So thank we're doing you. a takeover because of you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and he's graffiti, and then she's fine arts. Mm -hmm. And they've worked with my youth uh, empowerment programs um, right in the hood. You know, we are right in the hood. I mean, I... I live in the hood. I live in the Bronx. I don't know where you live, Tuffy. I'm in the Bronx. You in the Bronx, playing. baby? I'm All at right. the end of the Bronx River Parkway. If you can't right. find me, you ain't looking for me. <laughs> what? We're South Mott Haven. Hey, so what's up? There. Yeah. So, uh, one question, everybody. Just, just, just to do this one time. When, what year did hip hop, who's going to answer this, originate? Man, it ain't 1973. How about that? I, somebody um, said that. Somebody said that. <laughs> Listen, Gil Scott Heron was doing hip hop in the, in the 50s and 60s. So let's talk about it. Hip hop got its name in 1973. It got its claim to fame in 1973. But hip hop has no originating date because hip hop is part of the musical culture that is people of color, all brown people. Mm -hmm. So hip hop just like African beats, just like Afro-Latino beats, just like soul music, it all came from our soul, from our, our progressiveness in every neighborhood and, and culture and creed as we grew. That's the real talk. Hip, it's like what, what, what Drez was talking about when he said the DJ, the D, I said to him the DJ was our first social media because mm -hmm. we didn't know about music, certain music playing until the DJ played it on the radio until the, the, the DJ played it at the clubs, the parks. So hip hop was a growing, cultivating culture that just didn't, was not born in August of 1973. But we're grateful that it was acknowledged. It was a party that we could all agree to that we had a great time, right? I, so you love your little $2. You said started, my $2 right? party, right? There you go. $5. <laughs> so you, would you agree with uh, Tuffy, or would you want to come in and give a little bit of a different Oh no, I'm I'm in total agreement. I mean, yeah. 19, you know, at some point we had to figure out how we could officially document and preserve our history, our stories, our artifacts. And that just became a mutual point for many of the elements and people in the elements to kind of say, "Okay, we're going to use that as the ignition." But in reality, it had been around for a while. The the mainstream component of the naming and the, 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 uh, the uh, broadcasting in film and television, that made it really an international thing. But, you know, it, it had, its roots have always been New York well before that, and that just happened to be the, the one point that we all can kind of agree on, that okay. we'll start storytelling from there on out. And okay. I think it refers back to, to what Dress was saying, that was also a way to take ownership right. of Without it. A doubt. Right. And that, I think that's very important to, to realize. Okay, so I love it that I still don't have a year, but um, God is good. God is good. <laughs> he is. Why y'all not clapping with me? Y'all know I'm trying to look for a year. Where's the youth of me? Coast, we got to get your take on it. Yes, Coast. What do you want? You want to know about hip-hop? Graffiti and well, every time I'm I see I'm part of the first element, yes. which is hip-hop. Yes. And many of you viewers might not know that Cool Herc was a graffiti artist before he threw that first party mm -hmm. that day. And I'm going to prove it to you because I was over there looking for it very intensively. And I found it. And I have right here, let me go into my photo gallery. And this is a post. 
And what name do you see there? Cool Herc. Cool, cool Herc on the, the train. The million dollar, the million cool dollar. Cool Herc on the train. Before right. he threw that very first party in 1973. So he was a graffiti artist. So anybody who wants to debate about graffiti being the first element, let's go. I love it. So I don't you think know, wants to debate that because we know. This is what we do. <laughs> and I want to thank you so much because you got to send me that so that you know, Absolutely, you I know, will. I'm gonna throw it out there. Definitely you know me, will. I'll throw it, throw it out there yeah. so that everybody can get it, catch it. And um, I want to do this. I want to thank you for. I mean, every time I see you, you're bridging. You're at an event with the two of you. Lay a sands, everybody. So you two kind of complement each other because every time you guys are in one place, you got to see the kids go crazy for the, you know, the rough kids go crazy for the graffiti side, which is cold. And then I got my princesses, my girls, they always yeah. go crazy for Leia. Yeah. She's fine arts. Yeah. So, and you show how they come together. Every time I see you, you show me that. And every event that I catch you guys are almost on social media. You're at a hip hop and uh, uh, graffiti event, mm -hmm. and that shows the connection. So tell me a little bit, you, maybe you wanna ask the question, but tell us a little bit more about that. So um, we've been working together and bringing and educating the youth on art, hip hop, and music. And because we know that they don't, get art and music in school a lot anymore they, they took like a lot of that stuff out mm -hmm. so um we go back into the schools and we're trying to you know bring the music into the school and art into the school and combine them together so that they can um first learn about music for, learn about you know vibes learn about frequencies learn about you know good sounds bad you know bad sounds learn how to um, use music as an art, as therapy, you know, because what you, what everybody's doing and all the elements of hip hop really is therapy for them. Mm. Mm. You yeah. know, um, you create, you're creating fashion for somebody, but you're, you're, you're releasing your stress when you're doing that. When you're saying, singing, you know, rapping lyrics, you're right. releasing stress. You know, when I create art, I'm releasing stress. So, you know, I, I believe that um, it's a good way to help the kids, help the children, first of all, learn how to release their stress in a, in a positive way. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they're picking up um, skills and they're picking up, you know, creative um, ways to be able to express themselves in, in a proper way so that, you know, they can be out in society and, and, and thrive. And I, that's I, what we're doing. I love it. Just how you did prom and you came out and you decked out the kids. Uh, they graduate. I bought uh, journals for them so the kids could write and inspire and you decked yeah. out their journals. I want to say thank you so much, Coast and uh, Leah, Coast TDS and Leah. We have, um, we're going to have you guys come back again. This is uh, part one and two that we are the takeover. <laughs> and um, maybe that uh, you want to close out, Leah? Wow, there's so much more to see. I mean, right now you got the first episode, you got a little taste about the history and where Latinos fit in. And the second episode we talked about media. Media. And in the third is coming right up. Fashion and photography. All right. So we've got every day, every month you're gonna be seeing one new episode talking about one particular topic until we get to the end of the L line when we get to talk about art, dance, and, and social activism. And of course, the Universal Hip Hop Museum here in the Bronx as well. Yes. And um, the truth is, there is no end to the L line. We keep, <laughs> we keep going. That's why we take over wherever we go. They coming back. They doing it again. They doing it. That's right. Right, They Cole? doing it. That's right. <laughs> We're doing it. So we're gonna have you guys come back. The saga continues. Um, you know, the, the thing is, I want to do um, episode. I, you know, we covered episode one and two, and I really wanted to invite you both three back, and then. Every guest, Coach, you're in episode six, I believe. So I'm hoping that you can come back you know, uh, for episode, you know, when we review episode six. And um, Coaches and Leia are their friends of this family of, of crossover. They do a lot of amazing work and give back in their community. And um, I have some, uh, some uh, beautiful work. Um, she live painted on this show. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. She live painted okay. on this nice. show. She made a live painting and she endorsed it over to me on this show. I just wanna say, just from her heart, and this is what, this is what um, they do in the community. They give back from their heart. It's very important that you found these talents, and mm -hmm. you know, we're not even connected in that way, and we found each other now, sure. and through Coast, and then, you know, Tuffy, and then, you know, Tina Beth, and then, 
We're gonna keep doing this. We just, I just want to keep doing this, okay? Don't close out yet. Okay. I forgot one thing. Okay. I have to get something. Okay. Uh oh. Oh, I forgot. That's right. Major presentation coming up. Uh, make sure. Uh, we love you. I love you. you. I love you too. And we're gonna have you back, and we're gonna yes. do some more work because. I know that this is a great collaboration and we have a lot to do for the community. So we're live all over the world, www.bronxnet.org. And also, uh, I just wanted to say this, that if you guys can come back um, and join me, we can do episode uh, three and four. Mm -hmm. We'll break down three and four. And then whatever you want to discuss on this show is your show. How about this? How about we're not coming back? We're staying here. We're never <laughs> leaving. We're never leaving. <laughs> Me and Willie found a spot. We're already, we're, we we made a hammock. We're good. Willie <laughs> told me my nails are crispy. I'm crispy. good to go. Crispy. Good. I'm good to Come go. Come on in, folks. So last but not least, I took like two weeks to make this for the L-Line for my good friend that has been collaborating with us and helping us with family Turn now. Turn around to the, the camera. And the oh. it oh. is a jacket that I did for Atlanta. It says the L line. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, it took me two weeks. And I did it with all the love and all the heart. Thank you. You're welcome. I want one. I want one. I'm going to get to support it. Uh-huh. That way, Tuffy, we could do the closeout. Okay. No doubt. So I want to do this, Take everybody. Over. Turn around. Turn around. Make sure they can see it, Elena. Uh, 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 Elena. Elena. Walk nice. it. Nice. Walk that walk. You better walk that walk, honey. Yes, honey. Yes. Oh, oh. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. You doing it. All right. All right. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much, Elena Romero, for joining me on Crossover TV. Tuffy, I just thought, thank you for joining me on Crossover TV. I want to do this. I love you, Tina Beth. Thank you. I love you. Tina Beth uh, Pina joining me on Crossover TV Live at BronxNet. Yes. And uh, this is the takeover. So CUNY came over to BronxNet, and we're Crossover TV, and we cross over all the time. And I want to thank you for sharing the Latino, sharing the Latino take on this whole thing. I just always thought it came together, but you just put it together for me. So I love you. Make sure to watch the hip hop. Thank you, Coles, TDS, Lay us in. Bye everybody. I want to thank all my guests for coming through today. Hi, this is Ed Robinson. Yeah, yeah, me. Without further ado, I could chant it now for the queen of all media. Na 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 na. Mama can drop, oh, you're the greatest, yeah, oh, 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 see, let the truth be known, we never had a boring moment in our lives, with Kendra on the radio, we are never alone, we're never, never by ourselves. 